Ask halftime time right now. Josh Brown, you are first, and I love the question because it's one I've been wondering about myself and would have asked you about anyway. Adam from the United Kingdom wants to know about CrowdStrike. Is it still a buy? Hey, Adam. So I'm in the stock from lower levels, and I don't think that I would buy today going into earnings because as we've seen from Snowflake and other high-flying, expensive growth stocks, even when they report great results, you don't always get an instantly good reaction in the stock price. So if anything, what I would do with this situation, if you're not in it, uh, is look for uh, the company to report a number that doesn't wow the street. And if you really want to be a long-term investor, I would take advantage of that type of dip and buy in. But going into the earnings, very, very risky strategy. I don't have any edge on what they'll say tonight. I'm hoping for good, but expecting the possibility that it may also be volatile afterward. And I will react rather than try to uh, react in advance. Uh, and that's typically been the way I've played these types of stocks. Adam should watch Mad Money tonight, too, with Jim, because he's got an exclusive with the CEO of CrowdStrike. So that's very timely. Adam uh, from the U.K., tune in. There's George Kurtz is going to be on with Jim a little bit later. All right. Jenny, to you from Sandy in Colorado. I'm underwater in Magellan Midstream Partners. What do I do? What's your outlook now? I wouldn't worry about being underwater on this one. I've owned it since 2006. They've paid and increased their dividend for 18 straight years, and they own 9,800 miles of refined product pipeline all throughout the Midwest. So until farm trucks and equipment and tractors and trailers are all being powered on sunshine and wind, there's going to be huge demand for Magellan's pipelines and the, tra and the energy that it transports. I would stick with it. It's almost a 9% yield. The yield alone is going to get you out of that hole. All right. Good stuff. Dr. J to you. John in New York. Uh, another John in New York. Uh, what's your take on Palantir? You got, you know, CARP, the CEO, uh, is an exclusive today on Closing Bell, so we're excited about that. You own the shares and the calls, so you should have a good opinion on yep. what you think. What, what's the deal? Right. Uh, well, Scott, I couldn't buy it on the IPO, but I bought it right after that. I thought it was vastly undervalued where it was delivered to the market. It had tripled since that level, um, and now it's pulled back to around the 2570 level, I think, Scott. 25, John, should be pretty decent support. 2250, very strong support. When these guys get contracts, they are huge, and they're very actively out there looking for those big contracts. They're elephant hunting. I'm sure Mr. Karp will talk about that on Closing Bell. I will be tuned in for that. Scott. All right, his conversation with Wilf, one we're looking forward to. All right, uh, Michael Farr, Edward in Alabama. CVS has an attractive valuation. However, since I use Amazon instead of drug, drug stores and grocery stores for my RX, the future seems dim. Is it investable? Inquiring minds want to know, Michael Farr. Uh, yeah, uh, Edward, this is one of the most frustrating positions I own because it's one of the cheapest, best, greatest kind of companies on paper I can find. I just can't get the performance out of it, but I'm holding it. I would buy it today. Ten times earnings, growing earnings at 10 percent, two and three quarter percent dividend, and 70 percent of the people in this country live within three miles of a CVS, and they're all going to go there to get their vaccine and buy stuff as they walk in and walk out. I love this company. I just need to see the stock performance get better.